Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another episode of the podcast. Um, tonight, this morning, I don't know, I record them at night usually. Um, I'm never efficient enough to record them in the afternoon when it would make sense. So I tend to do it uh, in the late afternoon or actually not in late afternoon, evenings. <laughs> And sometimes it's closest to like 10 o'clock at night and I like to post them at midnight. So really cutting it close sometimes. Um, I'm going to talk about Amy Winehouse, um, a subject near and dear to my heart. You know, July 23rd, 2011, I have that memorized, you know, the day that she died. I often think about whether or not she'd still be alive. The, the whole situation when she was found dead, if you recall, or maybe don't, and I'll bring it up. So she had been partying all night, and her bodyguard tried to, he tried to wake her up at around 10 o'clock in the morning, and she didn't really move. And he, he said, well, you know, she usually sleeps in when she's, you know, partied all night. And then... He went back about 3.45, I think, 3 or 4, and she was in the same exact position. And that's when he realized, oh, she's dead. And, you know, called and everything. I don't know. At, at 10 o'clock, was she alive? I mean, he tried, He says that he tried to, to rouse her, I think was his words. And what is, was I unable to? So, um, you know... She probably died earlier, but I mean, her alcohol level is like 0.46. Think about that. So you get a DUI at 0.08. So it's six times the the legal limit. You know, it, it's rare that you see somebody at anything higher than 0.2, 0.23. So for her, a, a tiny human being to be a 0.46 is. That's crazy. She must have just been nonstop drinking, you know, all night. And was she getting her life back together? Here's the thing. Um, I'm not sure if she was really getting her life back together. Because that uh, that last guy that she was with, um, I'm trying to remember his name off the top of my head. Um, was it Josh? No, it wasn't Judge Bowman. It was, um, what the hell was his name? Oh, Reg. Reg Travis. That's right. Um, that guy was, she was with him probably 2010 until she died. Something like that. They met in 2009. And he was not a nice guy. He was arrested after they broke up for rape. And the woman says, well, you know, he didn't really rape me. So fine. But still, he was dating somebody else while he was with Amy. He was just with her to pump up his own projects. And I will tell you a little story about him that people don't really know. Is that he um, had a bunch of you know, sex tapes, really, of him and of him and Amy. And he tried to sell them after she died. But nobody wanted them because it's kind of macabre, right? Um, it's tough to sell a sex tape of somebody who's dead. You know, it's more of a, oh, yeah, man, I don't really want to watch that. There's nothing, there's nothing interesting really about that. I mean, I suppose if a porn star has died or something like that, um, there might be a spike in interest in her, her sex tapes or something. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of creepy. So nobody wanted them. And, you know, if he had tried to sell them while she was alive, he would have made a ton of money. But... He didn't want that money train to stop, so he just didn't do it, and he waited until she died. And he's not the only one. There's a lot of sex tape. There's a lot of pictures of her. There's a lot of pictures of her, you know, with a lot of guys and doing some some crazy things. And um, I've seen pictures of over the years of her uh, where she was naked or where she was, you know, blowing some guy. And um, I don't know. It's just they were always sad. You know, there was nothing. Um, 
erotic or m anything to turn you on really at all. They were just kind of sad and depressing. Especially when she, after, when did she get her breasts? Like 2009, right about the, right after she got divorced, right? From um, Blake Fiedler, Sybil. Um, she got her, her breasts then, and then it was just, it was sad because you had this emaciated body with like meth scars and, um, you know, the self harm there's scabs everywhere, and then she's got fake breasts, you know? It just, so you got this anorexic, mess of a looking person with fake breasts. There's nothing, you know, sexy about that at all. You know, it's just sad. Um, I have a blind. It's the only one that I didn't read out loud from Reveal Day. Um, so I'm going to read it now. And it's a long blind item. And in fact, in reality, it's a long blind item. <laughs> um, not just the label. So this is from uh, July 2018. And to give you a little backstory, um, well, actually, it talks about the backstory in there a little bit, and then I will tell you a little bit more um, after I finish it. So, like I said, it's from July 31st, 2018. I don't think it'll be that tough to figure out the main subject in the blind. And I, I, let me stop there, because nobody guessed it. I don't think. I mean, that wasn't the, the most popular guess. People guessed it, but it wasn't the most popular guess. So I guess I was wrong with that sentence. But anyway, I'll straighten that. I don't think it will be that tough to figure out the main subject in the blind, but it is a story I've been wanting to write for a few years now. I always tend to want to write it this time of the year. To make it more puzzle-friendly, I'm including some of the people that were on the sidelines during this period. When I met her, I knew who she was, but really just as someone who enjoyed her previous record when I heard it. I would have told her if I had run into her. I thought that record was brash and really expected nothing less in real life from someone who made that kind of record. The thing was, though, when I first met her, she was 180 degrees from that. I almost never met her. I'm trying to think of some other way I would have met her if not for that weekend, and I don't think we would have crossed paths. I tried to think of every possible way to get out of going to where I did meet her. You know, where all it would have taken is one gust of wind and I would have pulled out. I don't like heat. I hate it, in fact. Some of the greatest feelings I have had in life were when I was hot and planted myself in front of an air conditioner. Who remembers those moments? Me. That's who. Um, things were different for this particular event back then. And I'm talking about Coachella. Very different. I do remember making a call to this foreign-born former A-list singer group solo in my 120 minutes kind of world, and it's Bjork. And landed two tickets for a longtime friend of the site who I would still do anything for because she wanted to see her at the time, favorite band. And honestly, I can't remember who her favorite band was. And the person I'm, I'm talking about that I did this for was, was Dominique, but I don't, I don't remember who her favorite band was um, at the time. I need to go look at the, at the lineup. Um, when I got the tickets, I, of course, told the form, I told York that the, a uh, longtime friend of the site considered Bjork to be her favorite singer ever. Um, and I think that was really far from the truth. Uh, anyway, Bjork was supposed to perform in L.A. two nights before her show. And I had plans to go and hit whatever booze she ordered in her rider. But she canceled her show, though. And we decided to just kind of do dinner instead. And the thing about Bjork is that I understand her so much better the more I drink. She says I use it as an excuse to drink more. Probably. My drunken self got ahead of my common sense, and I agreed to go see her perform. She was at Coachella that year. The only reason is because she was going a, a day ahead of time. Um, so no traffic, and she had a place to stay where I could crash for a couple nights. How was I going to get back home was something I should have thought about, but didn't. I always got to think about that. <laughs> so I went, and I sweated a lot. Uh, it was during the hottest part of that day, during sound check that I first met the subject of her blind. Let's call her TD, um, Amy Winehouse. Unlike what most of you might think about Amy, she was incredibly shy when I first met her. Um, Bjork introduced her to me. After a brief hello, Bjork left us alone while she went and did some press or drank tea with honey or something. It was just myself and Amy. Felt like 20 minutes, but it was uh, about a minute before she said, you know, it's fucking hot, isn't it? Only she said it in an accent that made it come out something like, it was just the most... Thanks, everybody, for listening. I really appreciate it. 
You can uh, catch my blog seven days a week, crazydaysandnights.net. Over a hundred posts, updates every single day. Uh, social media, you can find me at NT Lawyer on Instagram and on Twitter. And of course, you can subscribe to Patreon for the full episode at patreon.com backslash NT Lawyer.